Hello and welcome to another instructional video brought to you by ZappySys. In this video we're going to cover how you can use a custom ODBC driver to connect to JSON data. You know you can connect directly to a JSON file or you can even connect to a REST API that returns JSON data. If your API doesn't return JSON data don't worry ZappySys has some other custom drivers that can connect to XML or CSV but this video is all about JSON. As always, this is a custom driver you'll be able to use once you download and install the ODBC Power Pack, which you can get directly from zappysys.com, hovering over products, ODBC Power Pack, and download the free trial. And don't worry, I'll be sure to post a link for this in the description below. Okay, so once you have the Power Pack installed, you can simply search for the ODBC UI on your machine by going to the Start menu and searching for ODBC. First thing to notice here is I'm using a 64-bit ODBC configurator. You might have a 32-bit or need to use a 32-bit depending on your needs, so just be sure to pay attention to that. Also, you have the option of creating a user DSN or data source name or a system DSN. If you want to access this particular data using just your user account, then this user DSN tab is fine, but if you'd like to access the DSN, using some other service account or maybe some other process that isn't specific to your user context, you would want to create a system DSN. I just want one for my user, so I'm going to stick with that option and I'm going to click the Add button. Now you have to specify which driver you want. Notice the many custom ZappySys drivers. I'm going to hop down here to JSON and click Finish. So the very first thing to do is give your data source a name. So I'm just going to call mine my data. And we'll look at the configuration. First thing is you'll probably notice there's a radio button for simple view or advanced view. So if you choose the advanced view, you'll be able to see properties in this format and you can search for properties if you know the name of, but I'm not going to use this view. I'm just going to use the very simple view. So like I mentioned, you can connect directly to a JSON file if you have one, let's say, on your machine somewhere and you know where it is, you can specify that. Um, you know, if you have multiple files and they're all in the same format, you can add an asterisk and you can load uh, multiple at once. I'm just going to use uh, an API because that's what I think is really cool about this driver. And I already have this URL copied on my clipboard, so I'm going to paste it in there, and notice you'll see some special configuration pop up below. So the first thing to specify is the connection type, and that's usually going to require some user credentials. So I'm using a very simple API. Yours might be very complex and specific to your needs, so always, always, always refer to your API documentation for how to manage your connection, especially for things like credentials or authentication. You might be using HTTP and you can click the continue button to specify, oh, is it a user ID and password or do we need dynamic two-step tokens? You know, some are use OAuth, so you can click that and then manage your custom OAuth settings. This is going to be very specific to your needs. I'm just doing a very basic example that has no credentials, so I'm going to stick to that. Next, you'll want to specify the request method. So if you're just getting data, you're probably going to use the get method. But suppose you're writing data to some data source. You can use the post method. And you can add parameters in the body by clicking this little edit pencil. And you can specify those. You can add parameters in the URL. You can even edit the headers if you want to do that using this little icon. Again, I'm just doing a very simple example, so I'm going to use the get method, and I'm going to select that. Something else that's really important is this array filter down here. So this is where the actual flattening happens. So I'm going to select this select filter option, and this is where you can see some arrays that are available from your API. You might be using a single array. You might be using a nested array. I'm just going to select this value option. But, you know, if you know the specific needs of the data hierarchy that you're looking for, 
feel free to specify that, but you don't have to, it's just totally optional. Just wanted to show you that it's there. So that's it, you know, this is a pretty simple example with basic settings, but that's really all you need to set up a connection and you can make sure everything works by clicking the test connection button. And there we go, it works, great. So if you'd like, you can generate SQL that we'll say, sure, that represents this particular data connection. Uh, you can also copy the settings. So let's say you wanted to copy this driver and make another one on either this machine or maybe copy it to another machine. You can say copy settings, select the settings you'd like. There we go. Now it's on our clipboard. And then on the recipient machine or wherever you'd like to load them, use this little load settings option. Um, so super handy, super portable. Uh, and even with this generate SQL, you know, one thing I didn't mention is you can overwrite. So right now here it has our little URL for the API that we want to use. But if you'd like, you can overwrite this particular URL. So it doesn't only have to use this particular setting. You can overwrite things at runtime. That's a little handy feature to know. Okay, so we have a working connection. What data are we getting? Let's hop over to the preview tab. Straight away, you'll notice that it has a default query that we've already been populated with, so it may work out of the box for you like that. Um, you can try the preview data to see so, and there we go. We have some rows down here, but already I noticed that I'm asking for 100 rows and I'm only getting 20, so there may be some other configuration for things like pagination that we still need to specify, and we'll talk about that one in just a minute. But, you know, what if we want some other data? We can use this little drop-down and pick another table that's available from our API and we see that some data is available and this is handy if you don't know all of the columns in every table or you're not sure where a column comes from you can see which columns are in these endpoints but you can also do other flexible things so you know if you want to comment out a column if you want to do a block comment for some columns. You know, if you want to give a column an alias, you can do that. And we'll do preview data again. So here we see, now we have state, and we see less columns. So just know you can use this little SQL editor to write some custom SQL for the data that you would like to return. If you're not sure of how to write that SQL, that's okay too. You can use this little query builder tool. So notice down here I have a new SQL editor, and as I click and mat modify these settings, you'll notice that other SQL is getting added. So then you can copy this SQL to the clipboard, and now you have it. Or you can use some examples, you know, if you want to see specific examples. So there's lots of help here. Uh, you're not on your own on how to use this particular SQL editor. So again, I'm going to just preview data one more time. Nothing has really changed. And just know, once you do preview the data, your metadata gets loaded for you automatically, so that's handy. But like I said earlier, I'm only getting 20 of the rows and I'm expecting or allowing up to 100. So how do we manage that? So to update the pagination config, I'm going to go back to the Properties tab. And now I'm going to go over to the Pagination tab. And you'll notice there's a lot of options here for pagination, that's okay. I'll just remind you again to refer to your API documentation for your specific needs. But for this example, I'm going to hop down to this next linked cursor expression field and I'm going to click these three dots. So I know this API response that I'm getting includes the more data link in this particular API attribute. So I'm going to select that one. Now I'll go back to the preview tab and I'll click the preview button. And there we go, we have 91 rows, so we're getting more data than the initial 20 that we got. And this would appear that all 91 rows of the table are being returned because we didn't reach our maximum for 100. So that's cool. One other thing to mention has to do with performance. So again, you know, there's a lot of flexibility with these queries and what you can do. Let's say I'm going to use a custom SQL. I'm gonna use this uh, view examples and I'm gonna do this group by limit order by option. So this will show you how to use these clauses. Okay, great. So here we have 
some custom SQL that uses a different URL. Like I said, this one's going to use the invoice table. So don't forget, you can overwrite the URL at runtime. And you know, he's doing a sum with some order by clauses. So just know that, okay, we can preview this data. And there we go. We get some measures by country, which is exactly what this thing does. Uh, but, you know, when you're doing all of this heavy lifting, it's going to invoke the client side engine. It's going to get data from the server. It does aggregates on the client side. So just know that there is this feature available, but there might be some performance hits to keep in mind because notice this took almost a full second. So just know, I just wanted to point that out that you may notice some things with performance that you'll want to address. I'm also showing a lot of even though this one does aggregates, it's a pretty simple SQL statement and it only uses uh, one table, whereas you're not limited to just something from one table. You can come into this custom objects tab and you can create new stored procedures. You can create new virtual tables that this DSN can use. You can even come over to this examples tab for some more SQL examples on how to use certain syntax, on how to join another URL, or if you want to look at array transformations, if you want to look at functions, if you need help with that. So just know that there's a lot of power and flexibility with the SQL editor, and it does a whole lot more than just getting data from one particular table. And you also notice back on the properties tab, we're only really looking at the settings tab and the pagination tab. You have advanced features for throttling, for error response, down here you have data format, uh, pivoting columns, so there's a lot of advanced features that we didn't even cover. But that's really it. Once you have a working configuration, so I'll test it one more time. Yep, it works, so I'm gonna say okay. And when you're ready, you can just click okay. And there we have it. We just created a new ODBC driver that connects to a JSON API data source. That's how easy it is and flexible it is to use this custom Zappysys JSON driver. Okay, so we've already covered how to create a custom ODBC connection for JSON source. Now let's see how to use the data from that ODBC connection in Power BI. So as you can see, I already have an instance of Power BI open and I'm gonna click get data. We're using a custom Zappysys connector, so I'm gonna go down to other and we're using an ODBC connection. So if you had multiple ODBC connections, you'd have to pick the one from the list. That's obviously the one that we made. But you don't have to specify the DSN right there. You can do a DSN less option by just pasting in the connection string. So remember, I'm gonna hop back over to our connection. We can use the copy settings feature and actually get that connection string for our API. So I'm gonna paste that in there. And if you wanted to go ahead and write a SQL statement for the specific data you're looking for, you could do that. I'm gonna leave it blank. And now we see all of the options available for our source. I'm gonna use the orders table. And there we have it. You know, we could make something super simple like order ID by date. You know, we could drag in other tables. You could do whatever you wanted to do in Power BI using this data source. And when you're ready, you could publish the report, schedule a refresh, or you could even install Power BI's data gateway, not to be confused with the Zappysys gateway. But just know that if you use the Power BI gateway, you can't do the DSN less option where we paste it in the string. You need to use a system DSN because that gateway uses a service account and that service account needs access to the ODBC connection. But that's it. That's how easy it is to retrieve data from an API source with that custom Zappysys ODBC connection and then using the data in Microsoft Power BI. If you want to give it a try but you haven't already downloaded the ODBC Power Pack yet, go ahead and do that now. And don't forget the link is in the description below. And as always, be sure to subscribe to the Zappysys YouTube channel to get more tips and tricks like this and other updates in the future.